Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays, A Link to the Past. We made it all the way up here from Death Mountain and we are ready to take on the Tower of Hera. We're gonna equip our magic boomerang just because it's probably a safer item to have on the item slot. You never know what you're gonna get into, but you're gonna find out right away I'm going to show you this before the game even does, that if you use the magic mirror in a dungeon, it warps you back to the beginning. So if you need to do a bit of a reset, that's the best way to do it. So welcome to the Tower of Hera. This is a dungeon that features a lot of crystal switches, a lot of blocks, a ton of Moldorms. It's kind of light on the enemy front. Not really a ton of baddies to have to deal with, which is really convenient. But we're going to be seeing a theme of Moldorms in this dungeon. I wonder why. So prepare yourselves for that. Maybe this is the predecessor to the Tail Cave. That one was all about Moldorms as well. But yeah, this dungeon in general, not too difficult. So let's uh, get a little hint about what to do. Oh, wait. D Mike already told you. Here at D-Mike Industries, we pride ourselves on being ahead of the game and not needing anybody else to give us handouts. So yes, this dungeon in general, pretty easy. You got some flame spit and triceratop things. This is just not a very long dungeon. It's not a very tough one. The crystal switches can get kind of annoying if you're not ready for it and one of my least favorite gimmicks of A Link to the Past in pretty much any Zelda game are flying tiles. As you're about to see, I do have a little bit of trouble with this. Surprisingly, I don't think I've ever really gotten a good pulse on how to avoid these. I know that in Link's Awakening, you could hide in the corner of the room and just kind of hack away with your sword, but I don't, this is not looking good. Oh boy. Oh viewers. Oh viewers. That's, um, that's too bad. But thankfully we have the recovery fairy, which is useful. Get all your hearts back. Now we have an empty bottle. So hopefully we'll be able to Refill that in the not too distant future. But yeah, once again, more Moldorms, more crystal switches, more blocks. The game is just really heavy handing it right now and what you're gonna be experiencing a little later. A pretty classic Zelda dungeon though. And I like to save this one for last. So it just makes sense. It's the smart thing to do. And a really tough puzzle here. Hopefully you can figure this one out, viewers. Definitely grab the pots with the magic potion before you use the magic. So that way when you're done, you don't get any sort of a refill. That is the smart thing to do. But opening that chest gets you the big key after you light all four of those torches. There you go. Probably one of the most difficult Zelda puzzles I can imagine. So I'm glad you guys were able to help me figure that out. Wonderfully done. Okay. So we're going to keep moving. It's one of my pet peeves whenever I play this game and there are those dumb crystal switches when you get trapped in a room and you got to go back and fix it. Talk about the worst thing in the entire world. Ugh. <sighs> but viewers, you're in good hands, of course. You're never going to be led astray at D-Mike Industries. Don't worry about it. And now, an introduction to one of my least favorite enemies in this game are the weird, aggressive jellyfish on wheels. I don't know exactly what these are, what they're supposed to be, but that's where my mind goes, and I hate them. Thankfully though, they can be taken out with a pot. They do not like pot or people hitting crystal switches 10 times in a row. But yeah, if you actually hit them with it, that's the important part, is you have to make contact, which is something I did not do, so keep that in mind. 
And here we have these weird little star pendant tile shifting panels. You step on those and it moves it around the room, which is weird, but it is a gimmick that you're going to see a little while later that actually is required to master if you want to get the dungeon goodies. My goodies. My goodies. All right. So let's not fall. Okay. Great. Usually when you fall down a pit, it will knock you down one level, which isn't so bad. But now we have to traipse all the way back to where we were, which is a little frustrating. But we will survive. No worries. Would love a replenishment of my health. That is not going to happen. We do still have the empty bottle, which is pretty great. We can hopefully take advantage of that later. Maybe we'll hit up a fairy fountain or something. Game just doesn't really hand out hearts at a frequency that makes D-Mike happy. I get so upset that I wind up speaking in third person, which makes me sound insane. Once again, another enemy that is immune to my boomerang. They just don't want to get banged and I totally get it. All right. As you can see though, this dungeon, not so tough. There are some speedrunning techniques that I've seen of this particular dungeon that I don't know how to do. But I do know they exist. Does that count? You can Google them if you want to look it up. Not entirely sure how to do any of them, and that is why I am slow running this game. Not hitting my PB today. But as you can see, we have those weird transfer panels right in front of that big chest. And if we hit this one, we're still held off by the pit of oblivion all around it. So we'll have to find a solution. As you've seen, falling down a pit will take you from the top floor down to the one right below it. So maybe that's something we can harness. But first, as that jellyfish kills itself, we are introduced to the upgraded variety, the red turned burgling jellyfish. That's the official name of it. Very obnoxious. I can't really tell what they are. Do they have eyes underneath like the uh, the dome here? I can't tell. But an easy way to dispatch them, just bonk them into the pit. Pretty simple. Easy peasy. And if you need to refill, you can go and hit the crystal switch that unblocks them, which I did not because I'm stupid. And some bombable walls. Let's try these. What? Okay, well apparently those are decoy walls. And that's a fake door. It's really annoying. But yeah, if you fall down on this pit, uh, uh, well, that's not what we want. We need to fall down above the panels. If you fall down onto them, obviously you're going to get the same result every time. That's not ideal. There's only other one other top level switch if we don't switch the panel. Okay. Not 100% sure what I'm supposed to do here. Um, let's use our big brain skill and puzzle this one out. Maybe we'll, maybe one of these pits will do us. Oh, no. Well, we're going to get some pot at least. That's very good. <laughs> oh, no. Where are we going? Oh, we are down in the basement. But viewers... All is not lost. We do have an empty bottle. We have a bee, some Mountain Dew, and a final leftover spot for one of these lucky ladies. Slavery! All right, thanks, fairies. You can grab one, put it in the bottle, and 
absorb the other one into our flesh and it'll take us right back to where we were which is very convenient so then we can just keep attempting somehow to figure out how the heck do we get that big chest because we love a nice big chest we just gotta puzzle it out so we've got the pit that we need to jump into but the problem is that we're gonna keep hitting those panels so I'm wondering if the problem that I'm dealing with is that I'm not moving forward enough every time that I fall into the pit I land right on it so there's potential that I just maybe need to move a little bit I don't know if there's any sort of mid-air controls that I would have when I'm doing something like this but I can attempt it I have no other ideas so I might as well and we need to make the pit up here first that would be smart right all right so let's give it another go and hold forward okay success that is a bingo and we have received the moon pearl this basically just prevents us from turning into a rabbit whenever we are in the dark world which is weird because when we were in the dark world we were a rabbit for a total of maybe 10 in-game minutes wasn't really you know an issue so i don't know why they give it to you so soon i mean it is an annoyance but yeah here we go here's the giant moldorm link's awakening does a call back to this as the first boss of the game in the tail cave but this one's a little different it's structured the same way where it's surrounded by a pit if you fall into the outside pits you will fall down one floor if you fall down to that middle pit you'll fall down a lot of floors so if you don't like repeating boss fights don't do that it's really tempting to use spin attacks because it does double the damage obviously and Muldorm has a lot of health so something to keep in mind the only downside is using a spin attack has a tendency to force you out of the arena that was not why that happened but it is potential for it to happen so you just have to be careful you don't want to have to deal with that so how about take two I was going to try to do a bit where I pretended that this fight was happening for the first time every time. But I don't want to have to redo this more than once or twice, so... We're just gonna get good. Whew, that was close. And not have to do with that. This fight is not a bad fight, but it can get kind of annoying. There's a really good variant of this fight in A Link Between Worlds, the 3DS. Is it a sequel? I mean, I think so, but yeah, the version of that one is a lot of fun. There you go, I think it's like three, four spin attacks and the googly-eyed Moldorm is put down for good. You get your heart container and my favorite color pendant, the smartest of all, red, the pendant of wisdom. Here it is, the final of three. We have fulfilled Sahalala's wishes. And now we can go get our final prize. The Master Sword. All right. So once again, when you leave the dungeon, it just spits you right out to the front. And this is a, not anywhere close to where the Lost Woods is. So a save and quit is the fastest way to get back on track sends you all the way to D Mike's house and you can fill up your hearts you'll be treated to the Kakariko village theme which is nice it's our it's our theme song after all and now we just need to find out where the lost woods is because I do not remember at all and instead of just going right there how about we just get kind of bungled by a couple of soldiers you know the old eiffel tower whatever you're into so i don't know if 
Firing an arrow is not the way to do it. How about a night? <laughs> a gout. How a gout? How about a nice peek at this HD, not crappy pixelated looking map? You ready, viewers? Go look at the link to the past map on a regular copy. A regular copy. And not this souped up version that I'm playing. And check out how crappy it looks and how amazing this looks. It's incredible. Okay, so now we're on the right track. We are making our way downtown, walking fast, faces past. We're homebound. Okay. We will grab some of the landscaping around here. There's no real reason to do any of this. I am just very lost. But finally, at last, we have made it to the Lost Woods. And we started off with a bang. A little insult to injury. Everything here is trying to kill us, which is very unfortunate because we're just trying to help. All right, maybe tone it down a little bit. We're here for you, Lost Woods. Yeah, you gotta traipse through this area a little bit. There's fake Master Swords around for some reason, but there it is, pretty easy to find. The music doesn't shift though once you come into this area, which I think is weird. You'd think that it would. All right, so let's see what this has to say. Okay, maybe the Book of Medora can help? No, so uh, Swiggles Galore. Instead, let's just go ahead and take our prize. Now that we have the three pendants, they will glitter away and present us with the opportunity to grab the Master Sword. And there we go. I like how it says it. Sahazra la la la. Contact, contacts us telepathically. I mean, he's not here. So how else would he have done it? Also, it doesn't need to say that. Um, showing, not telling game. Ugh. But there you go. So now we have the Master Sword. It says that we won it. Which is weird. It's like a carnival prize. But uh, yeah. So there it is. It's our destiny, which I don't believe in. So there you go. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I've been D-Mike. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays A Link to the Past. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it, throwing a comment below, and subscribing if you haven't. I'll catch you next time. Bye.